Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, and today I'm really excited to show you a new collection of mixins called Juice. And now, Juice offers a whole host of mixins from things like breakpoints to just stylistic changes, and there's lots to go over. So, we're going to take a couple of videos and show you all of what Juice has to offer. So, we're at Juice's homepage, which is just juicynext.us and then forward slash juice. I'll have a link off to the description in this video. And as you can see, it's a really nice looking site. If we scroll down, uh, usually there's just some basic documentation and it doesn't get too deep. So let's explain a little bit what Juice actually is. It says mixins for life. And essentially, that's really what it is. It's a collection of mixins. It's not necessarily meant to replace anything you're already using, but it could in some ways, because there's a nice breakpoint mixin, uh, there's a nice clear fix mixin, there's a nice vertical center mixin, things that uh, things like Compass or Suzy already contain, but if you're using Suzy or Compass with Juice, then you might choose to use whichever one of those mixins feels the best to you. And right now, I'm really liking the way that Juice's mixins are labeled because they're nice and concise. So let's go ahead and install Juice and then get using a couple of the mixins. In the next video, we're going to dive into a little bit more and show you some of what sort of functions they have to offer, what sort of mixins, and we're just going to dive a little bit more. So if we have at the top here, there's this setup. So let's click setup. It's going to scroll you down here. And as you can see, you can install Juice with Bower. Uh, since I'm not using Bower on this current project that I'm on, I'm not going to do that. You can also clone it or fork it, or you can just download the repo. For this example, I'm just going to download the repo itself and place it into our project manually so we can see what's going on. Now I just have a basic project set up, something I've been using for the Suzy videos and some uh, HTML videos, but it's nothing really different. It's just a standard SAS um, project here. And I have my SAS in an CSS folder, as I often do. And you can see we really just have this main.scss file, and that's all we have right now. Now what we want out of this Juice Master folder that we've downloaded off of their website is within the dist or the distribution folder and it's the underscore juice.scss. Let's go ahead and drag this into our project here into our scss folder. And now we can actually import this with this one line import juice line here. So let's come to our CSS and at the top of our document we can just uh, say import juice because juice is in the same folder directory. It doesn't have to look for it. If we select juice, you can see that it's nicely documented. You can actually paw through here and pick apart any of their mixins, and it's pretty substantial. There's a uh, 567 lines of mixins here. So as you can see, the installation process isn't super involved. We're essentially just downloading a partial SAS file here and and uh, importing it into our CSS. So let's go ahead and actually try something out. Let's use some of these mixins here. So let's come to their juice page and let's come up top to the mixins. And you'll notice they have a really cool breakpoints mixin. Now, what I like about this is it's really concise. It's just add include BP for breakpoint. Now, if you want to have between two breakpoints, you can just pass both of those values in here. So you can say between 480 and 1024, these styles will be in effect. You can also just pass it min and then a value, and that's going to give you a minimum width, and then max and then a volume is going to give you your maximum width. Or you can just use a preset, and it's going to give you a preset value. What's awesome in here is that there are a ton of presets. Let me bump this up a little bit so you can see. Uh, we have X, X large, X large only, X large up, X large, large only. But then it gets into things that might be a little bit more useful, like iPhone 4, iPhone 4 landscape, iPhone 5, iPhone 6 Plus, things like that where it's less about the pixel size and more about the device you're trying to support. Now, I do appreciate they have all these iPhones here. I just wish they would have maybe some other popular devices as well. But either way, if you want to know what the exact pixel values for any of these are, all you simply have to do is head over to the juice.scss. And if we wanted to, we could uh, look at this map here. It's a SAS map and it's breakpoints. We have extra large, extra large only, extra large, large only, and they're all here. And these include things like min device width, 320, max device width, 
And so it's more than just a pixel value, it's actually your entire media query. Either way, it's really nice and handy to have all of these available without having to enter any of this stuff yourself. So let's go ahead and use one of them. Uh, let's go to our page here, and as you can see, there's not really a lot going on. I'm gonna do something really sort of idiotic, but just to prove a point, I'm gonna use one of these breakpoints to change the background color. Okay, and this is just sort of a standard test I use when I use uh, new technologies and I want to I just want to make sure they're working besides looking at the CSS itself I just throw something dumb in here uh, just so it's painfully obvious that it's working. So since I don't have a device, this is on a computer, I'm not gonna worry about any of these iPhone ones, but I can say something like, when it's small, then make the background color red instead of teal. So let's come in here, and in our body, we can type at include BP, not BG, BP, and we just simply have to say one of the presets. So without having any sort of uh, variable dollar sign before, we can just say small and include BP small, some brackets, and let's go ahead and say that background is going to be red. Now let's come to our page and refresh. When we shrink our browser window, you can see that once we hit this small breakpoint value, which we can tell from the actual code is uh, max width 40 M's. So when it hits that 40 M's, it's turning red and then we're back to teal. Cool, so that is the breakpoint mix-in. It's really super simple. I actually think it's really elegant for how simple it is. And I love that there's these presets. What's great is that because you can get in here, you can add and edit your own presets as you need to. So let's check out some more mix-ins in here. If we scroll down, you can see that we have a single side border radius. Now, you might know that border radius is sort of a pain when you're trying to do both of the top borders because you have to specify in two lines, uh, border top right radius, border top left radius. So luckily this mix-in makes it easy. It lets us do it with one line. And this is, you know, this is just a small convenience, but it's a nice little convenience to have, especially if you're using this technique. So let's go ahead and modify our HTML here. We can just say that this column one is going to have a background of dark gray, color of white. And let's come back to our page to make sure it does. Okay, let's give it some margin. Margin will be 40 pixels and auto width will be 80%. This stuff doesn't really matter. I'm just sort of making this stand out a little bit. Give it some padding of just 20 pixels or so. And now let's add this border radius. So we can say add include border top radius with hyphens in there. And then we're going to pass it a value. That value is gonna be something like 10 pixels. And let's save it. Let's check out our page. And as you can see, uh, if this isn't obvious enough, let's bump the size up. You can see we have a border radius of 10 pixels on this box. And now even though the documentation doesn't specify this, it should be easy to say that if you wanted border bottom radius 10 pixels, all you have to do is change the word in here and uh, the mixin exists. So let's say we wanted to say border right radius and it's there. So what's nice about this is it's flexible, you can use it any way you want, but it just takes something that is a two line, maybe pain to type all that stuff out and maybe copy and paste. It just makes it really concise and easy to understand. Okay, so let's check out one more mixin and we're gonna get into the rest in another video. So we have single transform. Now I like this single transform plugin because I always hate typing transform colon rotate parentheses and then the value. It seems to me like it would just make more sense to just say rotate 45. And now I mean I understand why it is the way it is, but this sort of just takes some of the unnecessary language out of it and lets you just say rotate. 
So let's go ahead and rotate column one. So we can just say at include, rotate, and then 45 degrees, and then off with a semicolon, come back to our page, and you can see our paragraph here has been rotated 45 degrees. So again, this isn't anything earth shattering or groundbreaking, but what it is is just a little nicety that makes writing your code less of a pain. So instead of just going down the list and showing you all these mixins, in the next video, I'm gonna show you some of the cooler stuff that's in Juice. So keep watching. As always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment in the video or hit us up at Twitter or Facebook. We love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.